Everybody, it is that time. Time now for the Blitz, in which I talk a little bit about college football in general, as I do each time this week. And I also will highlight the games that I'll be picking, as I'll be picking points against the point spread. I'll talk about how I did last week, and those games I'll be picking this week later on. First couple of notes from the world of college football this week. If you haven't heard, uh, bad news for one of Bob Stoops' former assistants. His brother, Mike Stoops, fired at the University of Arizona. Even though he led Arizona to a few bowl appearances, and it would seem that Arizona overall was a better program um, after he got there as opposed to before, doesn't matter because it's what you've done for me lately or what you've done for me now. And since late last year all the way to now, Arizona has been bad, losing 10 of their last 11 games, and then their most recent loss, losing to an Oregon State team that got beat by Sacramento State earlier this year, an FCS program, was the last straw. Now, Stoops has had six assistant coaches at one point be a Division I head coach. Kevin Sumlin, Mike Leach, of course Mike Stoops, as well as Mark Mangino, Chuck Long, and currently Kevin Wilson, who's the uh, head coach at the University of Indiana. There's absolutely no doubt that Mike Stoops is a very talented coach, but winning at Arizona is not as easy as it may sound. It is a basketball school after all, and in terms of facilities, they probably pale in comparison to the likes of Oregon, as well as Stanford, as well as USC, and neighboring school Arizona State, who seems to be passing and passing Arizona with ease, period. So can you win at Arizona? Right now, highly unlikely. Um, you also have to be able to get fans at the games, which I've heard consistently, um, they don't pack that stadium out. They might occasionally, but not all the time. It is a basketball school, and Arizona, whoever they hire, has got their work cut out for them. Again, Mike Stoops no longer in Arizona. And Big 12 news, if you haven't heard, it looks like according to Interim Commissioner Chuck Nidus, the Big 12 will remain at 12 teams next year. Uh, which means there will be no Big 12 championship game in the year 2012 either, along with this year. Nidus was under the frame of mind that Missouri um, will be in the Big 12 next year, even if they made a move. He doesn't believe that that move would take place in 2012. Of course, TCU is joining the league. That was made official this week. And, of course, A&M is moving to the SEC next year. So, Nidus says the league will remain at 10. They're not going to expand to 12, at least not anytime soon. So, little news of uh, college football. Of course, big news out of South Carolina. Steven Garcia, who got more chances, it seems, than former Major League Baseball pitcher Steve Howe. Well, Steve Spurrier said, enough's enough. Um, as uh, Garcia, who's been suspended on several occasions throughout his career, the senior quarterback uh, just recently tested positive for drugs. So, Garcia kicked off the team. Garcia was, quote, shocked. Yeah, but anyway, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about South Carolina later. They're going to be one of the 11 games I'll be picking this week. Now, talking about last week in my picks, and it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. You might remember the week before I had the 4-10 and 10 train wreck against the spread. Last week, we went 7-7. Seven for seven. So, on the whole, I am now 29-25 and 1 against the spread. I remain 4 games above 500. On the whole, this week there are just not enough appealing matchups for me to pick 14 games, so we're only going to pick 11. We always pick 12 games, and then I try to pick the most appealing matchups after that. We're going to begin with Oklahoma State at Texas. As the Longhorns came down to earth after being ranked 11 in the country, Oklahoma 
really put one on them. And now for Texas, they got to go against another high-powered offense, this time Oklahoma State. I think Texas will come back and play with a little more fight. And if they can run the ball, then they can stay with Oklahoma State. Problem is, defensively, I don't know if they're going to be able to get to Brandon Whedon. OSU's got a pretty good offensive line. The spread is only seven points. I'll look for Oklahoma State for the second straight year to win in Austin thanks to that high-powered O, OSU minus the seven. Baylor at A&M of what should be an offensive explosion from both teams. Neither team very good defensively, especially A&M from what we've seen recently. If A&M hadn't blocked that field goal last week and returned it for a touchdown, you can say that maybe A&M would have been in danger of losing that game in Lubbock. But they did win snapping that two-game losing skid. I think A&M at home probably wins, but eight and a half points at home against that Baylor offense that's very dangerous with the RG3 and Kendall Wright. I look for Baylor to keep it close, and I look for Baylor plus the eight and a half. Um, Kansas State at Tech. Tech is favored to win this game, despite the fact that it looks like Eric Stevens, their outstanding tailback, out for the season with a knee injury. Uh, Kansas State, I think, is for real. I think for uh, Tech, this will be the best defense that they faced up to this point, and um, I look for this one to maybe even go into the winning direction of Kansas State. But I do look for the uh, Wildcats to cover the three and a half. So give me K-State uh, plus the three and a half. Iowa State at Missouri. I look for the Tiger offense to get back on track after struggling last week in Manhattan, Kansas. Iowa State's defense is terrible. So give me Missouri minus the 15 and a half. Now, other games. LSU at Tennessee. Tennessee, they've got all kinds of problems. And if that wasn't bad enough, how about losing your quarterback, Tyler Bray? LSU, doesn't matter where they play on the road or at home, they're dominant. I look for LSU to win minus the 17 and a half. Florida is at Auburn, and Florida's actually favored in this game by two points. I don't know why. Florida has hit the skids the uh, last couple of weeks, and Auburn's better than advertised. I look for Auburn to win at home plus the two. And then South Carolina at Mississippi State. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I think the old ball coach Spurrier will have his team ready to play against the Mississippi State team that's been very disappointing this year. Give me South Carolina plus the three against the uh, Bulldogs. And then you have Virginia Tech at Wake Forest. Wake Forest has been a surprise this year, coming off an upset win over Florida State. They're at home. Wake Forest's defense is better than I thought, more than I gave them credit for, and I think they will stay toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Hokies. So give me Wake Forest plus the six and a half. Michigan at Michigan State. The Wolverines have been a surprise this year. They're still undefeated, but I think that comes to a stop because Michigan State's one of the best defenses in the country against the run, and Michigan loves to run the ball. So give me uh, Michigan State minus the three. And Ohio State at Illinois. Buckeyes recently have had a hard time playing a four-quarter game, had Nebraska down, but allowed the Huskers to come back and win. Illinois is having a real nice year, just like I thought they would. If you watched my Big Ten preview back in July, I look for Illinois to win at home, minus the three against the struggling Buckeyes. And my final pick is the game that college game day is at, Eugene, Oregon, for the Ducks against Arizona State. Sun Devils have only lost one game this year, but that one game was on the road, and that was against Illinois, Oregon. I think they're the best one-loss team in the country. Even if well, Michael James doesn't play, um, Kenyon Barner is a very capable backup. He's having a nice year, so I look for Oregon at home. I look for them to roll, minus the 14 and a half against Arizona State. That's the Blitz for this week. Don't forget my post game of OU Kansas should be Sunday morning. See you later.